Hello, noble ones, and welcome to Metatron's Academy. So recently we reviewed a video from the channel Equator AI, which was titled The Sound of Ancient Languages. You haven't seen anything like this before. Now, they have another video like this. It went less viral, but it has some languages that weren't featured on the original video here. So I kind of want to review it, check it out. Also because, man, there are two languages in here that I'm actually quite excited to see how they rendered. All right, so what are we working with? We've got Etruscan. How the heck they did this, I don't know, because we don't have much when it comes to Etruscan, but it will be interesting to see how they recreated it. Of course, it's not them, though. They rip off <laughs> these recordings without giving any mention or links. You know how I put the link to them? It would be nice if they put the link to whoever actually did the recording. That would have been nice. Maybe it's asking too much. I don't know. It would be interesting to know how whoever did the recording reconstructed the Etruscan language to this detail. Uh, I will, of course, tell you what we know. Uh, then we've got Sumerian, and I love that we're going to review Sumerian because we did Akkadian in the previous one, and even though they're not related, because Akkadian is a Semitic language and Sumerian is a isolate language isolate, meaning that we don't know what it's related to. You know, they live in the similar area, Akkadians in the north, Sumerians in the south, or what would be like modern-day Iraq, if you will. Mesopotamia, you know, between the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers. Still, be nice to see what it sounds like. Then we have Avestan, I haven't got a clue what this is. I'll skip it. Acadian again, I'll re-listen to it. Latin, we'll do this one third, but yeah, lingua latina. It's nice that they have the little phonemic vowel length expressed. We'll see if it's a different recording this time, and then we have Phoenician. Uh, let me listen to the Latin. Let's see how well they did, since that one I can assess more easily. In principio eret verbum, et verbum eret oh, apude, no. et deus eret verbum, opterat in principio apude. Terrible. So first, oh my gosh, this is bad. This is really bad. So the guy's dressed like an ancient Roman, I guess, but he's using a lot more modern ecclesiastical Latin pronunciation, or also called Italianate, which is much later. And uh, you can tell because his V's are left V, they would have been W sound and also no phonemic vowel length whatsoever his m's are fully pronounced whereas they should have been nasalized i don't think he's doing any aspiration in the h where there should have been the c is soft principio just like we do in italian instead it would have been principio in it's, it's not classical and it's not period this is pretty bad in fact and it kind of shows that whoever put this together and compiled it has no idea what, what he's using they just rip off recordings from someone else sometimes these recordings are proficient thanks to the person and other times and not to mention he's reading the bible so uh, once again for ancient rome in the beginning it was the the word and the word was with god and the word was god that's what he's reading it's, it's the gospel of john i don't even know if i want to continue uh, let me continue just a little bit but yeah really 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 bad choice to unless you were telling us ecclesiastical latin but at that point don't give me the freaking columns and the Roman guy, not to mention the columns, should be painted of crying out loud. Omnia per ipso fatta sunt, et sin ipso fatum est, nil quod fatum est. In ipso vita erat, et vita erat lux omin. Et... Yeah, it, it even sounds synthetic. I don't even think this is, is this a recording? If it is, I don't want to be, I don't want to be nasty if it is a recording, but it sounds very synthetic. Lux in tenebris, look at. Et also te tenebris? It's someone who even, it should be, Tenebris. He said look at, didn't he? Et vita erat lux omin. Et lux in tenebris look at. Et so it's a mix. It doesn't even know what he's doing. Principio should be principio and look at or principio and look at. Like at this point he's skipping between... How does he say? Does he say tenebrae or does he say tenebre? Let me see. Et, et vita erat lux omin. Et lux in tenebris look at. Et tenebre. Am non comprehend. And now he goes can tenebre instead of the full diphthong as it should be in classical. This is terrible. This is really, really bad. Oh my gosh. Fui tomo, Mr. Sadeo. Fui tomo, eh? Italian. Fui tomo, Mr. Sadeo. Pizza. I can't do it, guys. I can't do it. I'm sorry. I'm trying. Fui tomo. Dominerat Ioannis. Ic venit in testimonium, ut testimonium per beret de lumine, tomnes credere per ilmu, non erat ille luxet. Non erat! Non erat! <laughs> ut testimonium per beret de lumine, erat lux verna, quae illumina tomne nomine venientem in mundum. No, spara in mundum. <laughs> I can't do it, guys, I'm sorry. Etruscan. 
واكل الأوكو أي سأوك نساتيريا سكية ننتحري تهدكو واكل شيبر شوري لتحمس الكتار بيريا كيمك لوا كاسري حلق تي واكل إيكي شوني سولا سيمول و ريت سلبي كاسري سولا سيس واكل لون شيفا كيك نكفولي نوش نس واكل سأوك نس نونا مولو ريت سلبي كاسري يعني واكل اتحمس الكواني مارت سكسكا إشوي تولي لوكوي أبيراسي لتحمس للوكو كويسكو بيريبس كي بنا بيريس رقوان سهوت توس لي ريتنا يتولتي سنو تسينتي همايتي كويس كات نيسفان إري مارت سينتي همايتي تز Wow, it did not sound at all how I was expecting now, whether or not it's a good rendition. Let me tell you what we know. So based on what linguists have reconstructed from Etruscan inscriptions and comparative analysis with surrounding languages, the Etruscan language would have had some distinctive and intriguing sounds that set it aside from the other period languages. They would have had aspirated and unaspirated stops, kind of similar to ancient Greeks, which in this case I feel we are hearing, so that is good. Just to give you an idea, pr and p distinctions. And we do believe that it would have sounded very different from both ancient Greek and Latin. Another element to expect would be heavy consonant clusters and possibly two different types of s, one being either a dental or an alveolar and the other one being a palatal, more like the sh in English. Even though in this case we didn't really recognize anything, there would have been a word that we could have recognized. Like for instance, the word for Roma, so Rome in Latin, Roma, for them would have sounded something like Roma. So similar, just a different vowel. And another interesting feature is that they had the word persu, which would have meant mask, but most likely carried over into modern languages, including English, as the original root of the word person. Next. If you're enjoying this video so far, please take a moment to check out my Patreon page. With as little as a $5 support, you can help us ensure that we can continue to produce high quality and high researched content. And at the same time, you get access to polls, extra videos, unlisted streams, and much more. Thank you so much. Sumerian. Udria, Udzura, Riami, Riami, Bararia, Muria, Musuraria, Udulindwe Payaba, Udulindwe Mitsidugaba. Es kalam makaninda, shwaba shurinna, kalam maka ning tabakaba. Anchi tabadaba raba, kian tabadusoraba, munum lulu banga raba. Udanyan bandiaba, enlile ki bandiaba. Eres ki galla kora, san ribiche imma brigaba. Bawa baba waba, a korsheba waba yanki, korsheba waba. Lugalra turtur bandari, en kagalgal bandari. Turtur bina shukam, galgal bina giguda kam. Orangishma torre en kikake. Ningbuna dwa mi shushu. Lugalara angishma sawake. Ur baragin teshmunagwe. En kirama inyarake. Ur makhgin sangishimarara. That sounded like a tongue twister. See, the problem with reconstructing Sumerian is that it was the world's first written language. And it has been dead for over 4,000 years. Without linguistic descendants. While when we try to reconstruct Latin, we can use modern Romance languages to see developmental and evolutionary patterns and steps. Good luck doing that with Sumerian. Scholars are fairly confident when it comes to quality of Sumerian vowels, but not quantity. We don't know if there was a distinction between long and short vowels, as it's often the case for ancient languages. I personally think that the rolled R would be would have to be expected and possibly they would have had, apart from regular aspiration as we hear, possibly the kind of aspirated sound that sometimes we hear in we hear in, in German when they say ich. That maybe that could have been part of the language too. We've got Egyptian again, let's go. <laughs> Jisin paritra hiruta, hankit ko opidao, i hat nib nafrat wa abat ang tinutrim jajatit. Homata inanat hapim, chapahituf. Sasana chaunajim nimahit. Sur mauhar, bobat nit atra. I wonder why they always go with the uh, fully shaven Egyptian priest. Like maybe for a change, give me, give me, give me like um, an Egyptian farmer give me an egyptian specialist one of those that was like building the pyramid give me give me a pharaoh for crying out loud it's always the freaking priests <laughs> this sounds quite different to the other recording we analyzed the other day i'm not going to go into the details of how we reconstructed and up to a certain point we reconstructed uh, egyptian in the previous one they were specifically re recreating or trying to recreate middle egyptian which is the one that we usually have when it comes to classical writings i wonder what stage of egyptian this is supposed to be 
anyways, as I was saying, it's not as difficult, so I can't really judge it as much. Of course, reconstructing Egyptian is extremely difficult because as, as all Semitic languages tend to do, they didn't write the vowels. That's the same in the Bible. The Bible is only consonants, no vowels. Well, modernly, yes, they added them as points, like little dots. Uh, but when it comes to original text, there is no vowel. One of the, the way we interpret the Bible is based on the Masoretic system, but there are other systems out there that say, no, it's not this vowel, it's this other vowel. And of course, that can change completely the meaning of a passage. So it's the same with Egyptian hieroglyphs to not carry vowel sounds. Those were added. Imagine in English, it would be like writing house without the O, the U, and the E at the end. Now, the E at the end doesn't really matter because it's not pronounced, but basically you would only have the H and the S, but within the context and a certain level of norm in the writing, you would recognize if I write, this is my HS, and you know it means my house. But honestly, it could mean anything, uh, depending on what vowels you put, as long as an H and an S are present in that specific order. So what do we do? Uh, generally speaking with Egyptian, we add the vowel of convention when we have no idea. That's usually the E sound. And other times we vocalize it through Coptic, which is, is good, It's in a way, but it's not necessarily always precise. Akkadian, let's go. Anarutun kibima, uma malduk napserma, shama shu malduk darish uwiri balituki, she um sha ibba shu ina sut shama sh machriki ristamni valdikanik, ashum babatim utsucharati shataradim, kima ishtishu eshrishu ashtaparkim, ultapulini. Ibisaki tuktaili, apunama ibisam shariam pasamahuri. This is a little reminiscent of like an older version of ancient Hebrew, and at the end of the day, they were related as languages up to a certain extent. In fact, we should hear a little bit of similarity also in Phoenician. Let's have a look. Kohen Ashtar, Malak, Idenimbin, Eshmun Adar, Kohen Ashtar, Malak Idenim. Shakabit be arende ni ata til adam ashtipuk yet he arende al al tapta alti wa al tergedne ka ai edlen esep ai edlen kharot wa kilmanen meshed built aneki shakabit be arende al they all sound quite charming. Anyways, the noble ones, The uh, my favorite was the Latin of all of these recordings. Thank you for watching. And uh, in principio erat verbum. Thank you. Mamma mia.